Boom. What's cracking, what's popping, what's shaking, what's baking. All that good stuff. It's your boy C. Y'all come on in, come on in. See if I can get a better. There we go. Uh oh. You know what? Let's do this. Just get my camera arranged, man. I'm gonna go ahead and get this. This gimbal. Hold on one second. Let me um plug in my mic. All right, I'm back. Plugged in my mic. Sound is good. Let me put this right here. Come on in. Hit that like button. House rules. We got to talk about that boy, Jay Morrison. What's going on with the Black House? Uh-oh. Ah. You know what? I know what I'm going to do. Un momento. There we go. There we go. Am I loud and clear? Leave a comment. All right, come on in, man. We're going to talk about Jay Morrison. There's rumors swirling like crazy that he sold the Black House. Y'all give me one second. Alright, your boy Batman. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. All that good stuff. So let's talk about this. Y'all hear my animals in the background? <laughs> boy, them boys be going crazy when it's feeding time. But yeah. Alright, I think that angle is better. Yeah. I'm in the crib, man. Happy Saturday. Um, the Black House, y'all. So what's going on now is being reported. I seen it on, hold on, let me, let me pull it up. You know, IG, they got all the, what they call T. If you in here, man, hit the like button, hit subscribe button, all that good stuff. IG got all the good T. So this, this blog site, uh, damn, what's the name of it? Oh, you know what? I sent it to this person right here. Give me one second, y'all. Your boy be all over the place. Damn. I think it was, it might've been Baller Alert. But he posted it for sale. Oh, you know what? I got this one right here. You know, Julian Gordon on that boy, Nick. That boy on that boy, net boy. <laughs> what is going on with me today? Yeah. New Naturet. I've never heard of that. He's trying to do for sale by owner, but nonetheless, he's trying to do for sale by owner. Um, it looks like, I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'm not in the boardroom with Jay. You know, I have no idea. Oh, how the hell looking today, y'all? Y'all see I'm starting to get that hang time, right? Oh, that boy getting that hang time. Let me stop it. Nah. But yeah, I'm not in the boardroom with Jay. Um, I don't know the portfolio. I don't know what it's looking like. You know, it's just rumors. But Julian Gordon, you know, he's he's a part of the TREF. Anybody that know anybody that's in the TREF, you know, leave a comment down below. But nonetheless, they're saying there's no assets left. The only asset left is Jay... The house he copped, and I think it had a hundred acres, something crazy like that. So he copped the house and he copped the the legacy center, aka the black house. So I don't know, man. If he if he's actually selling it and it's on that what it's on that for sale by owner site, excuse me, it don't look good because uh, this thing burning up. <laughs> It's burning up. Now, luckily, you know, he took out 1.5, but it, now, let me, let's, let's go through the scenarios. If he actually refied this property, there might not be a lot of, a lot of equity left because according to Julian, he took out 1.5 new loan. The house was, the black house was paid off. 
So now they're saying that um, it's for sale. And I'm just like, well, I know it's like 20,000 square feet, some huge, commer it's a commercial property. How much is it worth, man? Because, and it's, if, it's, if this is all the, if the allegations are true, is Jay gonna do right by, by the people? You know, if this is the actual last asset, is he gonna liquidate that and send folks their money back? Now, my thing, I'm in real estate. So, like, I just refined a few properties and I'm in the process of refining some of my own rentals. You know, depending on how much you leverage, I don't know if you leverage 65% LTV, 70% LTV, 75%. If he went through a credit union, did he did he leverage uh, eighty? You can get up to eighty percent LTV, and this was a, last year. So I mean, there ain't much equity left to play with. Is it worth that? I mean, I know he did some renovations, and um, it's like a community center. But y'all chime in, man. Tell me what y'all think. Like, it's not looking good for all the Treff investors. Um, some people, the majority of people, I think 80% of the people only put in the minimum amount, which is 500 bucks, uh, which is wild. You know what I mean? It's wild. Like to think that, you know, the average Joe who's out here, I mean, the average salary in America for a person that's melanated or what they quote unquote call African American, the average salary for a black person is $40,000 a year. KK, what's popping? Hit that like button, hit that share button for your boy. So yeah, I mean, so people are working, you know, I, I don't even call it middle class jobs, bro. Like, it's it's barely scraping by now. If, if you're living in a city, a rural area, you're doing good. But if you're living in the metro area making forty to forty five thousand dollars a year, inflation is hitting you across the head every paycheck. <laughs> Gas went up. Uh, food, groceries that went up, cost of living that went up, apartments, interest rates for mortgages through the roof, uh, everything that went up, insurance. So uh, yeah, man, a lot of Treff investors look like they're going to be stuck like Chuck. Um, there are some folks who invested more, i.e. that boy Julian Gordon. So um, it's not looking good, man. The, the Black House, and it's sad to say, it's been a seven year, ex I think it's been an experiment. I seen somebody say, I was reading the, <laughs> I was reading, you know, the comment section be crazy. I was reading the comment section on that post with that vlog. I thought it was, I think it was a uh, ball alert. I think it was ball alert, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gen Z was popping. Come on in, man. Where my moderators at? I thought I had moderators. We got five people in here. Y'all hit the like button. Yeah, so the comment section was lit, bro. Like, if you would have heard what the people were saying, uh, like, seven years, you know, a lot of people are saying Jay was uh, in over his head. You know, he bit off more than he can chew. And from the, the, the looks of things, that's what it seemed like. Like, brother... Do you have any experience as a fund manager? N-word. What N-word? Yummy? I didn't say the N-word. <laughs> Gen Z, you tripping. But yeah. Um, man, like, you gotta be, you gotta be experienced, bro. Like, I know Jay from the block. Mr. Richie Rich, he called himself, all that stuff. Whatever, bro. Like, he he been in real estate. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know. I think he been in real estate since like 06, he claiming. Long, a long time. Almost 20 years. But when you talking real estate fund, bro, we at another level. Like, this levels to this, to this ish. You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows? <laughs> who knows his experience level? I mean, we seeing, I mean, what's the old saying? Where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't know if y'all heard, ever heard y'all grandma, grandparents say that. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So um, it's not looking good. Like y'all chime in. If you're going to watch the restream, the, uh, the recording, leave a comment down below on what you think about the whole situation. 
Um, you know me, I'm just I'm just chiming in, giving my two cents. Everybody on the everybody on the internet got a voice now. Everybody dropping in their two cents. Hey, so I'm dropping in my two cents. So yeah, I think that the black house, um, how could I put it? <coughs> Excuse me. I think that it um I don't know, man. I don't know. I think was it a you know, you know you're looking back on it now because if it's up for sale, you know, this is the end of the chapter of the treff, essentially. Was it a good purchase? Like, I know he probably got a deal on it. You know, it's in it's in Atlanta. He got that going for himself. It's in ATL. Uh -huh. So it's in a good market. You know, it's in a, I don't know the neighborhood it's in. I think it's near, I think it might be near the hood. Three people said, <laughs> you cracking on my numbers, bro. Uh, whoever you are, I don't know. You wasting your time, bro. Gen Z. But yeah. Um, I don't know the exact neighborhood. I think it's I think it's in the hood. I could be wrong, but um the value, bro. Like the what what was the whole you know, cause when you when you do real estate projects, you know, me, I'm I'm experienced. I I've, I've done many flips. I bought and sold flips. I've purchased, renovated uh rental projects. I've done the burr. I've done that. I've I've done short term rentals, Airbnb. You know, I got I got a nice amount of experience under my belt. You know, you go in when I when I target a property and I actually get it under contract because I, I will not buy a property. I have my what they call my buying uh not block. What do you call it? Not buying block, but you're buying what you call it. Nonetheless, it's uh yo oh. Well, I'm tripping today. I got brain fog. Brian, your buying criteria. Ryan Robinson, what are your thoughts on blacks and crypto? Are there enough black people in crypto? Um, I think crypto is a lick, bro. I know I'm I'm in South Florida, so it's a lot of uh, crypto millionaires here, you know. Um, I think black people should embrace it. You know, unfortunately our culture we don't like. We're not into embracing new stuff, unfortunately. Um, I think crypto is, is it's here, bro. It's, it's, a, it's stood the test of time for me. I, I could have got in, and guess what? I could have got into uh, Bitcoin around 2013. I met this guy. I had met this guy at my job at the time. I was working at AT&T. He invited me to a Bitcoin like networking seminar event. And at the time, I think it was, he was telling me it's like 10 bucks. <laughs> Closed minded, I'm like, what the hell is Bitcoin, bro? Like, but look now, I could have bought it for, I'm talking micro pennies of the value. Hit the like button, man. We got eight people in here. Hit the like button. Hit the like button for your boy. Twerk the algorithm. I could have bought it. I could have been a millionaire, bro. Maybe a billionaire. Who knows? If I would have invested a thousand bucks, bro, I would have, I would have 1,000 times my money. Maybe a hundred thousand times my money. Because now one Bitcoin is worth almost 70,000. So, yeah, man, blacks need to, they definitely need to embrace the crypto movement and it's here to stay. But nonetheless, back to the boy Jay Morrison. What was I saying about, what was I saying about Jay Morrison? Oh, so yeah, I have my buying criteria. Um, there's a certain amount, like each deal, I know, I know y'all heard of the, um, the 70% rule. I go off like, like for me, honestly, on a flip, I, I try to be around 50%, bro. ARV. I try to be 50% of the ARV. Um, depending on, you know, the work, the neighborhood, you know, the demand, I might go a little above that. But the majority of the time, bro, I'm at 50% or under it. You, most of the times, me and G, we getting our flips like 45 46%. Now, rentals... Same thing. Um, some investors use the one percent rule. So hypothetically, let's say you got a you bought a house, you're looking to buy a rental property, investment property. You get it under contract for a hundred thousand. You want to be able to rent that property for one percent of the purchase price, which would be a thousand dollars a month. Um, man, I hit I hit some home runs. 
I hit some home runs early in my career, man. I had a duplex. I had at the two, like 2%. Two I was getting double, bro. So I'm very conservative when it comes to buying deals that I'm going to take down myself. So like I said, Jay, I don't know. You know, shout out to that boy, uh, the kid from Jersey, his ex-protege. Can't think of his name. The light-skinned light skin cat. Y'all might know his name. Uh, damn, what's his name? But nonetheless, if y'all know his name, y'all know who I'm talking about. His ex-protege, he from Jersey. Uh, he got a nice following. I can't think of his name. Is it, um, damn, what that boy name? Boy, I got brain fog out the world today. It's going to come to me. But he was saying he never seen Jay flip a house. <laughs> like, What? He was, he was like, bro, Jay, just, Jay be capping. Like, he don't even practice wholesaling. And he just, uh, he just do it for, you know, make money online, sell courses. Real estate with Bill, what would you have done with um, 11 million? Bro, that's a great question. That's a great question, my brother. Um, to be honest, bro, I've been, once this, like, story started picking up some steam, I did a little research on like uh, what they call REITs. It's essentially what this is. It's a REIT. I did research on these these hedge funds, bro. Eleven million is nothing, bro. Mind you, for for what Jay pulled off is it's immaculate. It's immaculate what that brother pulled off. He he got people to you know pool their money essentially, and that's what we should be doing. You know, group economics, what they call it. But what I would have did, if I had an 11 million, bro, um, at the time he, bro, and see, this is the crazy thing, bro. When Jay got that money, bro, it was 2017. The market was nowhere near how it is right now. Let me say that again. When he got that 11 point whatever, four, five million, the market was in a different state. But one, interest rates were like in the fours. Money was half, half of what it is now. If you had good credit, you probably could have got an interest rate in the threes. So in and, and that time, you know, this is before pre-COVID. The market was healthy, bro. So there was some, bro, there was some killer deals out there, man. Like me, honestly, I would have went out of, I would have went after multifamily. And and then I would have scaled to commercial. I don't know if y'all watch Ben Mahler. I would have scaled like Ben Mahler, bro. I would have started out. I probably would have took that money and I would have tried to leverage that 11 million, bro, as much as possible. I would try to leverage that 11 million into like I would have tried to at least buy double that 20 million. I would have tried to double it the first year, bro. I would have went after you know eight unit, ten unit, fifteen unit deals all over the country that's what i would have did and if i would have got it in 17 18 pre-covid if i would have built the portfolio up nice bro he wouldn't he wouldn't be in the position he in bro but you know the allegations what are the allegations jay is scammer jay be frauding jay did this jay uh he's getting sued by this company he got this lawsuit. He got that going on. So who knows what he did with the money, bro? I, I know at one point he had tried to buy a, a bus with a building in, building in Louisiana. I think I watched the YouTube video. He put, out a, he put out a few videos about what they were doing with the money. You know what I mean? I think he bought a, a busted up, you know, like a teardown building in somewhere in Louisiana. But... He he blew the bread, bro. Like he blew the check, and that's what I'm saying. Like our culture, man, black culture, bro. We so impulsive. We so impulsive, man. Like what to support him? Yeah, I I can see from that standpoint. Like we we really want to support this brother, but was he qualified? Who was on the board? Like who was the who was all the players? Who was the owners? Like. I hope he, you know, disclosed that information to all the TREF investors because it was very risky. I mean, $500, it's a minimal investment. I mean, what you really can expect, 
What can you really expect from five hundred dollars? You just better off putting that in the stock market. Come on in, man. We got eleven people in here. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Help your boy out. We got eleven people. I got five likes. Come on now, help a brother out. It's free, man. All you gotta do is just just tap it like this, though. Just hit the button on your phone. Bam. It ain't gonna hurt you, man. Nothing. You just supporting me. Real estate bill. Do you think he'll get in trouble if he don't sell this house? Yeah. So um, that book Julian Gorin was on, on is on his neck. I guess he was trying to get the FEC, the Federal whatever Trade Commission involved. So I don't know, man. I, honestly, I think if you were a part of the if you invested in Treff, here's what I would do. I would demand like, hey, I need some kind of status update. Especially if I invested more than 500. Like, you had some people putting up thousands. I would demand from Jay and his company, what's going on? Yeah, thank you, Real Estate Bill. Hit the like button. Um, from there, bro, I'm getting a petition signed. Or we're, we're seeking legal counsel. Like, if I put my bread on the line, bro, hey, this it's business at this point. You know what I'm saying? Standing on business. That's the new saying. I'm standing on business. Like, come on, bro. You didn't blew the bad head. Like, you had 11.4, bro. How we down to the last asset? How, hold on. How we down to the last asset? We're down to the, the, the very two last assets. One of them is a house that you live in. Make that make sense. Like, how does that look? Bro, that, that's not a good look, man. <laughs> like, come on, bro. It looked like you finessed like my other, I, I did a live last week when the story started breaking. He finessed the black community, man. Like all that hotel, black power, that shit some bullshit, bro. And that's some G, G stuff. It's like, come on, bro. It's like he using that as bait. Like, oh, my queen, my king. I don't like, I don't like all that, bro. Like, like you playing on my emotions. Playing with my psyche, nah, bro. Yeah, what's what's happening, King? Yeah, that's straight, but like, don't don't hit me with all that, you know, black empowerment. And now look, black empowerment. Look look where it got him. <laughs> look where it got this brother. He in a bad position. So, y'all tell me what y'all think, man. I got ten people in here. I appreciate the love. What's going on? Let me see what they say with Bill. Real estate Bill. He said he can't sell anything because people start trolling everything that he got his name on. Bro, I mean, see, like, that's a, that's a lame excuse. Um, bro, I'm, I'm doing business. Like, of course, see, that's another thing, bro. Like, there's something called amenity. It's called a real estate trust, blind trust, double blind trust. How do you know people selling your stuff? Like you selling your stuff, bro. You're supposed to have a Delaware LLC, a Nevada LLC. Ain't nobody supposed to know. You're supposed to be moving in silence, bro. You got a plain LLC? Come on, man. This guy's an amateur. And I, look, I'm just calling. <laughs> I see it like I ain't trying to diss the brother, but come on. You, if, if that's a hey, real estate bill, if that's true, that. He feel like he can't sell nothing because people are going to start trolling him on the internet. Bro, how does someone know you selling something? Think about that. <laughs> like, bro, I have a trust. I have multiple LLCs and I'm nowhere allegedly on his level, but maybe I am. on. Him. I might be a higher level to him, but real sad. He's not savvy. That's what I'm saying. Jay was not qualified, y'all. This brother was not qualified. He played on our emotions. He finessed the black community and not look. What y'all think about that? What y'all think, man? My, I don't know what's up with this, uh, this counter, this uh, people counter on the YouTube thing I'm looking at and show how many people in the live. Like, it's all over the place. It just jumped from, it went to 11 to 5 to 2, then it jumped. See, now it just jumped to 6. Y'all hit the like button, man. Hit the like button. If you're going to watch the restream, share the video for your boy. Bro, and I talked about that on my live, yes, on my stream yesterday. By the way, 
for everybody who don't know, I'm streaming, tw I'm committing to twice a week. So you're going to get live stream. Um, YouTube is promoting and they push in more channels who stream more. So that's what I'm on. But I was on a stream yesterday. I was talking about Max Maxwell. Bro, his talk game, bro. His talk game is where his, what he got, how he's gotten to the place where he's at in his life. God blessed him with that talk game. Like, he got to give a gab, you know what I mean? But someone who is like an average Joe who don't know nothing about real estate from a can of paint, you're going to get sucked into that talk, bro, to that rhetoric, to that propaganda, to whatever you want to call it. You know, Jay, Jay is very strategic when it comes to uh, putting out promotional videos um, throughout the years, I started following Jay like 2014, 2013. He has some amazing marketing strategies. Um, you got to get into the brother. He's gifted. He's gifted when it comes to attracting people. Brother Kev. Yeah, man, the live, the live count is so inconsistent, bro. Like it jumped to 11. It jumped to two. Then it jumped. To, like, look, it just jumped. It just jumped from four to eight. And it say I got five likes. So. If you could, brother Kev, if you ain't hit the like button, hit the like button for your boy, man. But it is what it, it is what it is. It's the YouTube algorithm. I'm trying. Hey, it's like the Da Vinci Code, bro. I'm trying to crack the Da Vinci Code. Help your boy out. <laughs> but nah, man. That boy Jay got the got the black house up for sale. Uh, you know, I'm trying to find it. It's probably on Zillow. It happened to you too, yeah, bro. It's funny, my first, my first live I did about Jay Morrison, bro. I've been streaming for about three years, on and off, but this is my most consistent time these past thirty days. My my joint jumped from like, like right now is at ten. It went from like ten to fifty. I was like, oh snap! And it it stayed at fifty for a little minute. Then it dropped down to like 20 and it dropped down some more. Then it went back up to like 30. But that was, I had got a lot of views on that video. Jay Morrison, what you mean? Would I buy it if I had the opportunity? Nah, man. That's what I was saying. Was the, good, was, was the Black House a good purchase? I don't think it was a good purchase, bro. Like, maybe he had a vision. Like, he. Honestly, I think he was on some Nip Nipsey Hustle plays, like, you know, Nipsey Hustle. And see, Nipsey Hustle ain't even broadcasted. Nipsey Hustle had like community centers where the local people, the locals can come, use the internet, it's resources there, you know, access to the internet, access to printers, whatever. You need information. That's the type of plays he was on. He was renting out other, from my understanding, he was renting out the rooms in there for like, uh, satellite offices for small businesses. He was on some Nipsey Hustle head that already that whole infrastructure in place, bro. And it, it was low key, like he wasn't broadcasting it on the internet. Kev say I noticed they allowing people to scroll through lives and more. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the new uh, the new format. I think it's kind of dope. I think it's kind of dope. You know what I mean? It, it looked like they're trying to mimic TikTok a little bit. But, you know, I think right now all the platforms, TikTok, I think TikTok is the most, has the most engagement, but I don't think they're making the most money. YouTube making the most money. So whoever has the most engagement, uh, that's who they're going to, every platform is going to mimic. Real Estate Bill say, what makes it bad, interesting location? Bro, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I, what what can I say? I mean, you you ride through the hood. I mean, where you live at, bro? Just go through the ride through the hood. <laughs> what you see? People hanging on the corner, drug dealers, um, corner liquor stores, uh, check cash and event, uh, cash uh, advance, pay whatever, pay now. Like cornerstone every corner. Like, come on, man. You know what the hood look like. I came across your channel during the pandemic. Yeah. Okay, so you've been following me for a little minute, bro. I started uh I started the channel back in 2020. So all my people that's new, uh, we got like almost 4,000 subscribers, by the way. That's what I'm telling y'all, man. Hit the share button. We about to hit the 4,000 mark. I think we had like 3,840. 
something around there, but um, I've been grinding, bro. Like, I fell off. So 2020, I went hard. I was doing, you know, the traditional uh, scripted, you know, shoot a video. I didn't, I didn't, you know, that ain't that ain't what's the, the wave right now. The wave right now is going li- streaming, podcasting, and goddamn, and going live. That's the wave right now that, uh, in shorts, that YouTube the algorithm pushing. So, um, that's, that's what's up, bro. I appreciate all the love. Um, share the video, man. Um, you know, your boy, I've been consistent. Like I said, I was consistent in 2020. 2021, I put out one video. 2022, I started bouncing back. I put out a couple videos, but it was, it was horrible. I don't delete none, so y'all can go. I got my receipts. Y'all go check it out. But 2023 is when I, I had a videographer. I was paying for the, for the scripted videos, and I seen the results. But I've been doing research, man, and um, what I'm doing now, I think I, my channel should explode this year, God willing. Real estate bills say, uh, oh, okay, I never looked into where the black house. Yeah, bro, I think it's in the hood. <laughs> yeah, during the pandemic, bro. During the pandemic. Yeah, man. Appreciate all the love, man. Make sure y'all boys share this. Share this on your Facebook. Share it on your Twitter. Share it wherever you can share it. Your IG. Um, we appreciate all the love, me and Gigi. But yeah, man. Uh, I keep saying, but yeah. <laughs> saying that too much. But um, that boy Jay. Yeah, so my niche, bro, and real, so my real life niche is I'm a, I'm a real estate investor. Um, I don't buy nothing tra- traditional. Like, I used to be a traditional realtor, but now I'm a, I'm direct to seller, bro. There's no other way to do this business. Let me, let me say this for all the people who are inspiring to get into wholesaling. Wholesaling can take you, your life to another level. I'm a walking testimony. I started this business 2019, bro. I had zero dollars, bro. No cap. What y'all say? No cap? I had zero. She good, man. She recovering from the surgery. <laughs> she she gonna be she'll be back, bro. Doctor said 30 more days. She'll be back to normal in next month. You know she's trying to bounce back. If y'all follow her IG, go follow my IG at iTrap Houses. Um and follow her IG. She more popular than me on on social media. It's all good though. <laughs> she's at Gigi Bias, Florida. So if you follow if you follow her on IG, you'll see she had the neck surgery, bro. I'm so yeah yeah. So uh, Kev, check it out. Like I was saying, wholesaling can change your life. I started out wholesaling full time. I left traditional world. I had a brokerage. I was a realtor. Um, I was full time realtor for about uh, three or four years. Then you know I dissolved my partner. I had a partnership with the brokerage. That got dissolved. I jumped into wholesaling, bro. So now, now I don't do no creative, bro. I don't do no sub two. I don't do no seller financing. I, I mean, I would like to get into it, but that's not really my niche, bro. I'm just straight up buying houses um, off market as is, and I'm getting them dirt cheap, bro. That's the only way. The only way to do this this, this business the correct way, you got to know how to buy. I'm going to say that one more time, bro. If you're looking to buy houses to flip, if you're looking to buy assets, are you looking to buy rentals or short term? If you're looking to buy as is properties directly from the seller, you got to know your numbers. No if, ands, or buts, bro. And that's where a lot of people um, slacking it that get into this business, especially the ones who don't have no experience. Real estate bills say true. Yeah. Like if you don't, if you coming in, bro, even like the realtors, it's such, and see, that's where you got to be open-minded. You got to be open-minded out here because if you got that one track tunnel vision mind, commission, commission, 6% commission, oh, I got my buyer, I want to get a seller, like, no, this is a tough business, bro. And that's, you know, back to Jay, uh, Oh, I just said his name. Isaac Grace. That's his name. Isaac Grace. I told you it'll come to me. Isaac Grace was like, boy, I ain't never seen that boy do a wholesale deal. I ain't never seen that boy flip a house. So it takes a skill, bro. This is, it, And you can get the skill. Like, I didn't have the skill. I had a real estate background. I had a real estate foundation. It helped me transition. You know what I mean? But, hey, it's it really was trial and error, man. I had some help, a little help along the way from a few people that I was working with in the business, but most of it 
that I've got is self-taught. So how do you, at Kev say, how do you funnel consistent leads to make sustainable business model? Chasing deals. <laughs> hey, Kev, let me tell you something. That's a great question. In this business, you call it chasing, chasing deals. I call it follow-up, bro. The most consistent way to do this, this business model is follow-up. Follow-up. Some people call it chasing deals. I don't. I call it following up. And when that seller is ready to sell, they're going to sell to you because you've been the most consistent one in their face, professional, knowledgeable. You know your stuff. They're going to deal with you. And if they like you, they definitely going to deal with you, bro. Follow up. No ifs, ands, or buts, bro. Um, I, I, I've, done so, I've done a ton of deals. So let's see. I'm in year five. Bro, I'm probably around 100 plus deals total, wholesale deals. I'm telling you, man, the, the deals that I get, the deals that I have to, what I, I call it follow up and babysit. If I have to babysit a, a seller or a lead for a year, for six months, for five weeks, I've gotten some deals two years. I think as long as it was three years, those be the best deals. But guess what? People don't want to put in the work to follow up, man. It's hard work, bro. It's hard work. So that's what I'm saying. Like, has Jay put in the sweat equity? He got a good talk game. Has he actually been out here in the trenches? I don't know. T -t -t to be honest, I don't think so, bro. I think he just had a gift like uh, Real Estate Bill was saying. He got a gift of gab, and he, f he parlayed it. He finessed it into a huge following. And he sells courses and he does mentoring and he make money off merchandise. He really don't make no money in real estate. He really ain't as savvy as he say he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you just got to be careful, man. Do your due diligence because um, hiring, hiring, I'll say this, hiring the right coach and mentor will take you to a new level, bro. That's facts. <laughs> hiring the right hiring. Paying someone to actually coach you and mentor you that know what they, they know their shit and they actually not capping by who they say they are, you will, that's a cheat code. And I've seen it. <laughs> Matter of fact, I, I have a mentee. That brother paid, he got the cheat code. Within a year, he got his first flip. And that was when I first sat down him with sat down with him. What was I asked him directly, bro? Like our first one-on-one -on -one talk, what are your goals? I want to start flipping houses. A year later, look at my look at my boy. Shout out to my boy Moses. Kel say a more clear question is how you market acquire consistent leads, cold calling ads, text blasts, mailers. Okay, so you wanna know my you wanna know my my marketing strategy. Number one, without a shadow of a doubt, my brother, is cold calling. It's the most toughest method of marketing in any business. I can cold call selling pocketbooks in any business, any, any industry in America. Cold calling, not a warm lead where somebody's calling you. Um, cold calling, bro. <laughs> it's tough. You get cussed out. You get yelled at. You get screamed at. You get called names. Um, the whole nine. But again, it's a skill. I got, the, I got the mastermind course coming, bro. My emphasis is going to be on cold calling. If you're interested, you want to learn how to cold call, you want to know how to build a pipeline, because that's what it is, building a sales pipeline. You want to know how to manage that pipeline. You want to know how to follow up. Hit my DM at iTrap Houses in July. Y'all be on the lookout for that master blue. We call it the blueprint mastermind. So yeah, number two, bro, I was texting, but it's saturated. It's saturated. So we kind of eased off that in like 2022. My, the, the second one, which people are afraid of, I door knock, my brother. Door knocking. I door knock. Door knocking is a mud, boy. I didn't got some, I didn't got some crazy deals door knocking, bro. So it's all a script. Um, you don't want to be robotic. You want to know how to um, break the ice. You want to know how to overcome objections that's the main like people don't know what to say when they encounter a, a seller objection they don't know 
what to say next, or I don't, I don't know what to say. It's a learning curve, man. I had to learn. I had to learn on the fly. Again, I had a, I had a, a real to background, so I was used to going on appointments. I was used to meeting people. You go out and meet people, bro. Hand out your business card. That's another way. I hand my and bro. I oh so door knocking number three. I get referrals, bro. And all of all of my lists are free. I work free lists from the courthouse, pre foreclosure, tax delinquent, uh, probate. Uh, they got water shut off. They got tons of lists. Now depending on what state, what city, what town you're in, every town's different. We're in Florida, bro. Everything is public record. So you say so your exact list is cold calling manually. That turns me off to the business. <laughs> Do you at least have a team of cold callers? Nah, bro. So yeah, so with that, I know people are like, look, honest, everybody ain't a people person. Everyone's not an extrovert. Everyone's not built to be a cold caller, bro. I was Kev, I would say to you, um, if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna cold call, bro, it's, it's not the end of the world, bro. You can still get deals. You can send mailers, you could text blast. But guess what? You need money. And I'm not talking no little three, four hundred dollar budget monthly. You need thousands, brother. I don't have a team. Reason being, I don't want a team, bro. I don't want a team. And I know you're like, what? I'm comfortable. I'm content with my business is, bro. You got to know how to work your, uh, your assets. It's me and my fiance, Gigi. I taught her, I taught her the game. We cold call. Uh, we have a network of people that send us, send us uh, deals that they want a JV on. For right now, bro, I, I don't want a team, bro. And then I have to I have to manage these so-called VAs. I don't want it, bro. Like, I don't want to scale my operation to like, oh, I need eight, eight to ten deals a month. Bullshit. It's it's more headache, bro. It ain't worth it. I'll stick to two, three deals a month. And you just you can those two, three deals a month, I cherry pick. So we cherry pick the good ones. The other ones, we uh either we partner up on a JV or we wholesaling it to one of my buyers. So if it's a great deal, like um, I think we got four deals so far this year. We're keeping all of them. <laughs> oh yeah, Google Ads, bro. The SEO, the SOC, SEO, whatever. Click Google, click ads. Again, it's amazing. That's, and I, I've heard a lot of you know old school people. Let me take that back. More people with more experience who's been in the game ten plus years. They would have. They would rather have a warm lead. Someone contacting them, they feel like it's better quality leads. I say flag on the plate, because uh, most people who are calling a flyer or clicking on a Google click ad, they are a little more savvy seller. And I'm not saying I take advantage of people, but you get more juicy deals when I. I get. I, I can guarantee, bro. My deals are way more juicier than. Investors that just send out mailers, and I'm gonna tell you why. If I'm calling a probate list, or if I'm calling a pre foreclosure list, and someone, let's hypothetically say someone dies here in West Palm, and their kids inherit the property and they live in Pittsburgh, they have no attachment to that property, bro. Especially if the property need work and like it was drama. Most most deals we deal with, bro, there's drama in the family. Nobody gets along. You know I'm gonna get that at a I'm gonna get that at a deep discount. Kel say, yeah, I've grown in business. I'm all about automation, scalability. I've done that method too, manual. Hey, hey, I feel you, bro. But I'm an old school cat. Y'all new cats, I don't know how old you are, my brother. I'm not knocking the automation, but I, hey, there's something called the, the tortoise in the hair. <laughs> you right, cause cold calling sometimes you the only investor who, bro. Oh, Kev, you know what I forgot? No, how could I forget drive for bro driving for dollars, bro? Yeah, it's slow. You ever heard of a quick nickel and a slow dime, bro? Yeah, I might not get five deals a month, but I might find one deal that I make three hundred thousand dollars on, or I get it at a deep deep discount. And I'm cash flowing $1,500, $2,000 a month, and I got over $150,000 in equity, opposed to I'm just getting quick wholesale checks. And I'm, and I'm not knocking that because that's how I started. Bro, I'm, I'm about loan. This game about long term, bro. You know what I call my rental properties? 
Gigi call them savings accounts. I call them piggy banks. That's what we on the chase for. Yeah, website, run ads. I'm, bro, I'm all about that. You know, CRMs. Hey, whatever floats your boat, bro. But I don't, bro, I don't have a CRM. I don't have a, I don't have a cold caller. I don't have none of that, bro. And I'm doing, last year we did seven flips. I think we grossed almost seven figures. Or we, we grossed right as our gross profit was seven figures. I got, bro, every, every rental I got, it got over six figures in equity. I'm doing a refi on four properties in a couple weeks. Like, the, the cash out is going to be stupid. <laughs> you 33? Yeah, so I'm 39, bro. So, I, look, and I'm not knocking the youngsters, man. That's the new wave. So, do your thing, bro. If you like the automation, if you like the Google click ads, if you like the press a button and text. Now, I am going to get into some um, some flyer campaigns. You know what I mean? So do your thing, brother. You know what I'm saying? Whatever flows your boat. But yeah, man, your boy, uh, I've been on here almost an hour, man. Appreciate all the love. I'm about to get up off here. Go see what my little one's doing. Go deal with these animals. But yeah, man, Jay Morrison, the Black House, Y'all stay tuned, man. Every time something break, you know, I'm on it. I'm streaming. Uh, Tuesday, I got a very interesting stream. You know, I'm, I'm delving and diving into more broader topics and situations. So uh, y'all be on the lookout Tuesday. I got a nice stream, man. Y'all gonna like this stream. It's, uh, you know, it's all related to business and economics. So y'all be on the lookout. Um, Kev, appreciate the love. Everybody that was in here that hit the like button, appreciate you. Hit that like button. Hit that share button, man. We out. Peace, bro. Appreciate that real estate bill. You see, I've been original. Yeah, bro. Lock in, bro. Like I said, the uh, the mastermind blueprint in July, bro, $80 a month. It's going to change your life. But your boy out, man. Peace out.